Welcome to Q&A, Social Security Disability Today. This program is brought to you by the Reeves Law Firm, representing you and your Social Security and Disability needs. If you have a problem or questions regarding Social Security and Disability, call attorney Anthony Reeves. Here's your host, attorney Anthony Reeves. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing going. We'll move What should you expect after your hearing? Okay, so you've gone to the hearing before a judge and you've walked out the door. Now, a couple of things may have happened. Um, you probably Either one, you've got some great news, the judge is telling you, I'm gonna approve you, and you just, the decision's gonna wait in the mail. Uh, or the judge, or you walk out and the judge asks the expert some questions, the expert says you can't do any work. And you're like, okay, that means I win. Or you have a situation where the judge asks questions and then you just walk out the door and the judge says, I'll make a decision. So you're saying to yourself, what happens now? All right, a couple of things. Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. There is no set timeline for those decisions to be written. So a lot of times when judges are telling you uh, a particular time, they're giving you an approximation, not an exact time. I t listen, listen to me when I say this. They are giving you an approximation, not an exact time. So if a judge says, I'll have a decision out in probably about three to four weeks, do not blow up Social Security's office or start blowing up the phone of your representative because a month has gone by and you haven't got your decision. I tell people all the time, here's the problem, the thing you fail to realize. There are three people that play a role in your decision going out. There is the judge, there is the decision writer, and then there is the staff member that puts that ultimate decision together and mails it to you. Those three things work independent of each other. The judge makes his decision or her decision, compiles information from based on your medical evidence, puts it into a particular format, and provides it into a queue for a decision writer. Decision writers typically support more than one judge. So what happens is when that decision writer finally gets assigned that case, depending on their caseload, they then write the decision based on the guidance given by the judge. Once the judge the decision is written, it is then given back to the judge to give them the opportunity for a final review. They sign off on it, then it's mailed out to you. Now, first thing, most people ask the question, I've called and usually you're going to get a couple of responses. Once the hearing is over, it either goes to post-hearing development or post-hearing review. And you ask yourself, what does that mean? Post-hearing development means that the court is doing is considering doing some additional development on your case. What does that mean? That could mean they may decide to send you for an evaluation. That means that they may decide they need to get some additional medical evidence on your behalf. Does that mean that your case may take longer to, to be decided? Absolutely, because if the judge decides he or she needs more information, when the case is categorized as post-hearing development, that means there's some additional things they need to do. Post-hearing review. That usually means they're using that time to write their decision and put it together. Nature of the beast. It's just the way it gets down. Okay? How is there a set deadline for them to actually review the case, write their decision, and write the decision? No. And then what happens is after they do that, they hand it to, to a queue meaning they put it into a bin. It's kind of a, a virtual bin until a writer is assigned the case. So what happens is that it goes from post-hearing development to post or post-hearing review to pending decision writer. And so it may sit there for a while. Like I got a case right now where um, the judge approved it at the hearing a month, and that was about a month ago, and it's still at pending decision writing. He wrote the decision really quick, but because the uh, queue for various writers is kind of big, um, it's taken them a while to assign it to a writer. So once it gets assigned to a writer, it will go from pending decision writing to decision writing. Okay? Then at that point, somebody writes a decision on behalf, writes it on behalf of the judge. Now, 
That whole process can take anywhere from a couple of months to longer. Ideally, I tell people it should take about two months. Ideally. But I know some districts out here where there are judges that take them about six months to a year before they write a decision. It makes no sense, but it's the nature of the beast. That's why having a representative helps because they can kind of tell you those things. Now, the bigger question is what do you what do you do during that process? What should you do? Well, if you're representing yourself, you need to ask yourself the question, did the court have everything they needed about you to make an informed decision? Now, you're saying, well, what do you mean by that? Plain and simple, do they have all your medical records? If there was a discrepancy in there, like let's say one of the docs said something and the judge kept asking you about it, can you go back to the doc and ask the doc to write a statement about it? You notice that there was some medical records, MRI, uh, uh, Baker Act, you know, you were involuntarily admitted. All these different things, it wasn't in your file. If, you, if I'm you, you use that time to get those records so that you can get them to the court. That time is imp very important. So during that time, there's a couple of things you can do. Make sure that the file is complete. Make sure that you do what you need to do to get the medical records and all the any supportive documentation that Social Security needs to the court so the judge can make the decision. Once you've provided it, confirm, confirm that they've received it. Don't just fax it in or drop it off or mail it and think that you're okay because then you'll be mad if you get your decision and you notice that you sent the records in but they're not exhibited with the file. That meaning when the judge sends you his decision, if it's a denial and you look at the very back and you notice that there's no mention of any of the records that you sent in, you can't be mad at Social Security. Be mad at yourself. Because did you confirm that they got it? Don't sit around here and think all nice and new. You want to make sure that those records are associated, and that's a nice word of saying, were those records put with your file? When you walk out of the court after the hearing, know two things. Does the court have everything they need to help them make the decision? And be patient. The decision will come to you in due time. Thank you.